Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk about Power Pages. Now, Power Pages is a powerful no-code, low-code tool that will allow you to expose your organizational data and engage with external users. So today we're going to talk about some of the capabilities of Power Pages and the key things or the important things that you need to know to get started. So with Power Pages, what used to take a full-on project team to implement now can be done by somebody with simple access to the Power Platform in your environment and the knowledge of your organization, data, and processes. The next set of things we're going to talk about are the different scenarios that you might use Power Pages applications for or what is appropriate usage. Basically, is this going to work for me? I want to do this. Can I actually do that? And so I'm going to step through a number of scenarios. If there's a scenario here that I didn't call out, feel free to leave a comment. All right, so the first question you might be wondering or a common scenario would be, can I share my data with external users? So the answer is yes. That's one of the primary features of Power Pages. That's one of the reasons it exists. Uh, and so one of the things you can do, I'm in a really simple Power Pages um, implementation or application right here. Uh, if you're in your table permissions under security, you can actually add new permissions or manage permissions for any of the tables that you have in your Power Platform environment this, where your Power Pages is actually deployed or connected to. Um, and so you can actually set these permissions. So if we want to go edit these permissions, you can set read, write, update, delete, all of those types of things. Uh, and then you can assign it to a specific role. So in this case, I've assigned it to my authenticated users. You can also choose your anonymous users if you have that enabled for your Power Pages application. Um, but this is where you would do that. So based on your environment and your scenario, you can for sure set up the permissions accordingly, share that data as you need to. The next one is, can external users engage with my team by submitting data or creating data in my environment? The answer again is yes. So if you remember from the last one, if you look at the permissions, one of the things that you can do is you can actually give them update and create permissions. So they could come in here and actually create and manage their own profile. So that's this is a particular example of that. So my contact uh, or profile would be something where they would be able to update their profile. Or you might have other data, like if they're going to submit a support request or something like that, you would give them create permissions on the support request table. Uh, so the answer, yes. The next question might be, can I let my external users engage with us through an, a bot or a chat bot or something like that in an automated way? The answer is yes. That's actually something that's now built into the, the Power Pages application or, or platform. Um, there's actually, under integrations, there's an option for chat bot, which is currently in preview um, at the time of this video. Um, but you can actually turn that on and configure that to be the chat bot that you want in your Power Platform environment. An additional way that you can interact or engage users in an automated way uh, is through Cloudflow. So you can set up certain actions or button clicks or things like that that would start a flow uh, and then do all kinds of other fun things with that flow. So yes. Okay, another common question would be, can I process payments through my Power Pages application? Again, another yes answer. Love it. So this is something that you'll have to do th with a little bit of custom code, uh, but there are ways that you can actually uh, add or embed JavaScript that will actually connect with your uh, payment processor, your credit card processor, um, that you can actually embed into your Power Pages application pages that would allow a user to actually submit payment through your Power Pages portal. And if you're interested in doing something like that, there are a lot of examples out on the internet. You can Google that and find, find what you're looking for. The next question would be, can I create content that can be viewed anonymously? The answer again to that is yes. To do that, to enable that, uh, you're simply going to go to your Power Pages application uh, design studio. You're going to flip over to the site visibility, um, and you're going to choose whether or not to make that site public or private. Um, so if I made this site public, that would then allow anonymous or enable anonymous access to the site. Simple as that. All right, another question might be, can I allow self-service profile creation and management? So once a user, like let's say they register, can they, does that automatically create a profile for them? Can they register without an invite? Can they then manage their profile going forward? The answer to that is yes. So one of the things you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to identify what identity providers you wanna use for your Power Pages application. It could be more than one. Uh, but when you do that, one of the things you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to configure that provider um, so in this case, I'm choosing the Microsoft provider. Um, and then there are going to be some additional settings. So you're going to configure those settings. 
Um, and then within the advanced setting, you're gonna allow them to basically enable registration. Uh, so that's one thing. So that means they come to your site, they can actually create their own username and password or use their Microsoft account in this case to register with your PowerPages application. Um, and then the other thing you're probably gonna wanna do is you're going to want to map their registration or their contact to their actual profile or their login. And so what that essentially does is it connects the user to a specific contact record within Dataverse, within that Power Platform environment. Um, and then the other piece of that, which is we touched on a little bit earlier, which is in the permissions for the contact record, you're gonna want to allow your authenticated users to manage their own, so update their own profile record. And so that's a permissions thing that you would do in addition to these settings. So the next question is, can I control who comes in or who gets access or who can actually register with my PowerPages application? The answer is yes, absolutely. So in addition to specifying certain authentication providers that are allowed uh, to integrate or be used inside of your application, there's some basic authentication settings that you can turn on or off. Um, those being external login, open registration. So this is the one that's gonna allow people to just register with you. If you don't have this turned on, they can only register via invite. So you'll actually have to create a contact record with their email address. They'll then get an invite uh, that they can then log in with that email, email address because they're actually in the system. Um, and then another setting here that, that is probably pretty important is do, are we gonna require a unique email? And so this is gonna stop you from having a scenario where somebody somehow gets registered twice uh, and has two contact records, two profiles in your Dataverse environment. Not a very pleasant thing to have happen. All right, so another scenario, common question that would be asked would be, can I apply my branding to the PowerPages application? Again, another yes answer. I love these yes answers. To do that, you can simply go to the styling uh, tab for your PowerPages application. There are some basic themes that you can apply. You can select a given theme and it basically applies that across the board uh, to your PowerPages application. Uh, and then if you wanna tweak that further, you can actually sp uh, specify fonts, colors, all of those types of things um, with this tool. It's really easy to do. It's nice because it applies it across the board. You don't have to go do something special uh, on all of the pages to, for that branding to get applied. So the next question would be, do PowerPages applications support desktop and mobile? or are they responsive? So quick answer, yes again. Uh, one thing to note is that if you're interested in how they work in mobile or desktop, you can always use the preview button uh, and it'll give you the ability to launch uh, via mobile or desktop. So you can actually look at this uh, on your mobile device or in the desktop. So that's a key thing to note. All right, so we're gonna flip back over to setup. And if we go over there, there's another section called mobile, and under there, there's an option for progressive web application. And so you can actually enable this if you want to. And this is a nice feature, particularly for mobile users. Uh, instead of being in the browser uh, on their mobile device, it actually creates an experience that's much more like a native application on their mobile device. So that's a nice thing to enable. That's facilitated by the fact that it's a responsive web application uh, and it works really nice. One more little anecdote for all of those tech heads out there. PowerPages applications are all based on Bootstrap, which is a nice framework that's been uh, standardized so that all of the you know, modern web browsers support those applications built with that very well. Can I create my corporate intranet on a PowerPages application? So I'll say yes, but why would you want to do that? Uh, I would discourage you from doing it uh, for a couple of different reasons. One is there's another tool out there, SharePoint. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, go check it out. SharePoint is a great tool. Uh, it's much easier in terms of allowing uh, other people in the organization to author and create and manage content. Um, so that's a really strong reason to use that instead of PowerPages applications. Uh, and then the other thing is obviously gonna be licensing. So if you have Microsoft 365 licenses or Office 365 licenses, you're already gonna have SharePoint. It's free, uh, you can use it, you should be using it. Uh, whereas if you tried to stand this up as a PowerPages application, you're gonna have to pay for you know, at least authenticated user licenses for you know, people who are accessing it externally or authenticated users, which would be your users. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You could do it, but I would not recommend it. So those are 10 common and pretty high level scenarios or use cases for a PowerPages application. If there's something I missed or something you thought of, feel free to leave a comment below. We're always interested in checking those things out. So the first thing to know is that PowerPages any PowerPages application is gonna be based on an underlying Dataverse data model. And right away, that implies that you need some form of PowerApps licensing for your internal users. 
I recommend two types of licensing to think about. One is gonna be the project team, and the other is going to be your business users. So folks who are on the project team, those are gonna be your developers, your testers, maybe your product owner. Those are the folks that are going to need, likely need licenses to more than one environment, uh, because presumably you're gonna do full application lifecycle management, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and so therefore they need access to the application in multiple environments. Therefore, they need a Power Apps per user plan license. Your other users, your business users, are simply gonna be the ones that are interacting with the data uh, on the internal side. They're gonna be engaging with your customers. Uh, and they presumably just need access to the single model-driven app that lives on that Dataverse uh, or in that environment uh, that backs up that PowerPages application. And so therefore, they would need a Power Apps per app plan license. Then the other side of it is the external user licensing. Uh, that comes in two forms. So if you're gonna allow authenticated users, meaning they're gonna log in and you're gonna know who they are, you're gonna need an authenticated user capacity pack. Uh, if you also, or alternatively, want to allow anonymous access, you'll need an anonymous user capacity pack. Both of those capacity pa packs come in different levels or tiers with different pricing associated with them. And we'll provide a link to the reference for those licenses and pricing uh, below. So I did just mention Application Lifecycle Management, or ALM, which reminds me we have a whole world of other content related to Microsoft 365 and the variety of tools, especially Power Platform tools, and even ALM on this channel. So be sure to subscribe if you like that content. The next thing I wanna talk about is application planning. There's nothing more destabilizing than an application that doesn't work the way that you expect it to. And so in this new Power Platform world, uh, you are delivering applications to your users. It's one thing to deliver an application to your internal users, make a mistake and have to redeploy or fix something. It's a whole other thing when you're exposing your data or your application or a workflow for external users. You're gonna make a lot of people unhappy. You don't wanna make your customers unhappy. So it would behoove you to actually spend a little bit of time planning your application. In the Power Platform, you can develop things in multiple environments. So you can set up a dev, test, and prod environment, which gives you the ability to work on something, deploy it to a test environment where somebody can actually make sure that it's right and validate it before it goes to production. So set up a process for that. There's actually a lot of tools that you can use to automate that process, pipelines and, and the like. I encourage you to set up the process and follow those rules. You won't regret it. All right, the last big thing that I wanna point out here is that you need to remember that you're dealing with data and you need to treat the data appropriately. So. In a world where you're exposing data to external users, you have additional risk for data leaks, for example. So if you have personal identifying information, for example, in your data set, uh, and you're exposing it on your portal, in your Power Pages portal, that's something that you need to deal with and you need to deal with it appropriately. All right, so I have a pro tip for you for Power Pages. This is a bit of a strategic one, not necessarily a tech one. Uh, and that is to treat your PowerPages application like a real product. So it's one thing to be delivering an application to your internal users. It's a whole other thing to be delivering something to external users or customers. They have different expectations. The bar is gonna be much higher. This is your face or your, your engagement with them. So you need to up your game. So you should be planning for things like creating support documentation, training manuals and user manuals for those external users, uh, release cycles, release documentation, all of those types of things ought to be in your plan so that you deliver a polished product. One of the things I think people are actually fearful of when they think about PowerPages applications is the licensing costs. So, um, you know, we talked a little bit about licensing for external users here and licensing for internal users. Uh, obviously your internal users are gonna be, you know, like 20 bucks a month for a per user Power Apps license. Um, but uh, you might be a little bit fearful about those external users. Uh, and it all depends on how many users, how many views you have. If you've, um, the, really it shouldn't be that scary. It's actually really cost effective uh, to get quite a large number of users using your PowerPages application a month. Um, and so I, that would be something I would encourage you to like, don't, be, don't let that be the thing that, that scares you away from it. Uh, and the reality is, you know, if you're building an application that one day, you know, you go from let's say 100 users a month to 10,000 users a month, well, bless you, you have 10,000 users a month, it ought to be worth the money that you're gonna to have to pay for the licensing for that. Um, and you're you know, having an impact on a lot of people. So um, I, I think the thing that I'm simply saying is like, the pricing scales well as long as you're building an application that has value.
Yeah. Like that's honestly like when we first started like talking to customers about power, power pages or portals at the time, it was like, oh gosh, it's going to cost so much money, money, right? And and I think part of the problem was Microsoft hadn't really worked out the licensing tiers very well, and didn't communicate it very well. But what they have now is the the two packs, um, and different tiers. Like it's one to fifty users, fifty to two hundred users, kind of a thing, and it's much easier to comprehend and understand. And so you can actually look at that and go, oh well. I see how much it would cost me. And so I think it's a lot better than it used to be.